Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to Superman's Comics. It is another episode of the CBSI Bolo Show, recapping this week's hottest comic book releases. With me, as always, is Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. What's going on? Oh, excited to be here, Brian. You know, not as many hot speculation picks this week, but some great reads, and I'm excited to talk about them and get into it when we get into this list. Right. Also, as always, this show is brought to you by slabbedheroes.com for modern guarantee nine eights at a great price check out nick dwartman at slabbedheroes.com and this this is your first time on this channel and you might be wondering what the heck is the bolo list it is the be on the lookout list where we cover first appearances reader buzz variant buzz for the week as well as jack's one long-term play pick with that being said we're gonna get right into the first appearances of the week. Kicking it off, we get Hawkman number 17. And this is what? The first appearance of Sky Tyrant? Right, at that blacked out character kind of uh, right there on the cover. Now, this is another Earth version of Hawkman. So, you know, I know Batman Who Laughs is like the, the big thing. But these types of characters, I don't always feel like have a lot of long term legs, um, especially coming out of like the Hawkman universe, but at the same point, it got some buzz. It leaked out a few days early. Um, there were a lot of people checking for this. Not a high print run on Hawkman, so you never know, but to me, the value of this Hawkman series has always been the amazing art on the cover B variants, um, and even this week has another another real cool cover B. Um, if you go back to the start of this series, some of the best cover Bs that have come out uh, since Rebirth have come from this Hawkman series. Who is the artist on that cover B? You would ask me that. I have Sorry. no idea. They've, they've oh, switched, only they've switched them up. Is it looks very Zafino esque and it looks yeah. very King Thor number one Zafino it, Thor it, variant. It does. It does. They've they've switched up um, who the cover artists are a lot, but we we've gotten a lot of like heavyweights um, uh, like Steph Stepan Sychik, the guy that we never <laughs> neither of us can pronounce his name. Um, they've gone with, uh, uh, um, in Lee has done some covers. Um, they, they've had some of like the top variant artists in the game, uh, do some of the variants for Hawkman. And that, that, that's, I mentioned that before, like, that's one of those things that I've grabbed off those Midtown, like 75% off sales is some of those Hawkman variants. Speaking of which Midtown's got a 75% off sale going on right now. So, all you dollar bin diggers, that's a great thing to check out. So it's, it's James Harren. Oh, okay. Um, He's an underrated artist. He's a guy who puts out good work. So Sky Tyrant, and then we also had a first appearance in Magnificent Miss Marvel number eight this week. Right, another one that leaked out early. I think New York Comic Con had a lot to do with that. Um, it seemed like publishers were letting people know kind of what to expect this week. Um, the character's name is Monopoly. Uh, real ugly looking dude. Uh, don't know much about the, the character, um, but you know, magnificent Miss Marvel, Miss Marvel, uh, Camilla Khan, is one of those characters who, uh, you know, really and truly, they still need to do world building with. So I actually look at this first appearance like it's one to grab and stash because we just, I mean, you, you don't know who her main villains are going to be going forward. They're just now getting Carol Danvers really established. So. Um, this is this may be a sleeper pick to grab. Yeah, and um, I want to give a shout out to my beautiful wife because she has started getting into reading comics lately, which is an awesome surprise. So she liked Walking Dead back in a couple seasons ago when she started reading the compendiums for that. But recently she started picking up other books, so I gave her Saga. And she, I didn't make it to the LCS, but she made it and she picked up the first eight issues of Magnificent Miss Marvel, and Gwenpool Strikes Back. So kudos to her reading those books. And, uh, yeah, hit me in the feels. Might have some, right. something That's else so to cool. have conversations about coming up. But good stuff. But enough about that. Let's get into more first appearances. Starting Gotham City Monsters number two. Right. The Red Phantom. You see him right on the cover. Uh, named in the trade dress right there. Um 
It'll be interesting to see with this series. We talked about this last week, the, the Gotham, or the last time this book came out, the Gotham City Monsters team. Is this something DC is going to go along with or not? That's really the question here with this villain. Same sort of deal. So um, if you were investing in the Gotham City Monsters as a team, maybe you grab this. Otherwise, I don't know. Um, it's more of a minor first appearance. And we talk about this on the Bolo Show. Just, you know, the Bolo list isn't a buy all these books on this list list. You know, it's not that type of list. This isn't like a the hit list of books I'm out buying on New Comic Book Day. So this is one I would probably skip and go back and grab if it looked like it had more legs. But let us know in the comments section how you feel about this. Um, you know, there's, they're releasing so many first appearances. you got to kind of be selective. Yeah. Why do they keep coming up with all these villains and then it's just the name of the color and then the name? Like Red Goblin, Red Phantom. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of color, red mist. There's yeah. a lot of um there's a lot of that like color, especially red. Yeah. Um so I think red evokes something and they just go with that. Yeah. So the last one for the first appearance is some people might not be aware of this book, but it's this little book we're talking about, Amazing Fantasy fifteen. This is the facsimile edition. Of course, I like the facsimile <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> It's cold season, but um, yeah, I always like the facsimile editions better than the True Believers because it's pretty much the original art. The title's the same, but this is the first appearance of uh, who's that? Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, that that guy. Um, I don't know. Might be some long term legs in that character. Red Ryan, Spider sure. Man. Yeah, <laughs> but you know what? I agree with you. I love these facsimile editions. I like the True Believers too as well. I just think that the trade dress and paper quality obviously is much better on the. Um, 399 versions of the books but you know when they first came out i was like why are they doing this but i find myself reading older books that i've never read before and enjoying it um i think they're cool collectibles for the younger crowd who will probably never have the opportunity to own some of the books that are being done um and marvel's going really hard with it and then we've seen that be kind of copied and duplicated from dc so i think you're only going to get more of that type of release. We saw the Watchmen release today with a dollar comic from um, from DC last week. They released the Joker number one. So um, I, th I think we're going to see more of that type of thing. It seems to be popular in the market. So whether it's a spec play or not, I don't know. But it's a cool collectible. And, uh, you know, not everything's about speculation. Like we're collectors first. Um, whether you speculate or not, that's kind of an add-on to how you go about your collecting. And then those who, a lot of those who speculate, they speculate just so that they can buy books for their collections. Right, and you saw that image for a while was hot with some of those, like their Walking Dead dollar, True, yep. for, true First. Is that what they were called? I forget what they called them. Yeah, what were they? The uh, Image First. Image First. True First. I got yeah, Topher, Topher on the sure. brain. <laughs> right. But, yeah, so yeah, it was... Sure. Of course, they did Image first for Walking Dead like 13 times or something like that. But Yeah, yeah, it had a lot of printings. But, you know, some of those dollar books, they can they can heat up. They can get popular. Um, it is possible. Right. So that wraps up the first appearances. Before we get into the reader buzz, just want to say thanks for everyone that's watching the live chat during the premiere. This We are actually recording this Wednesday night is currently 10.38 p.m., so we're getting this recorded, live premiere, everyone in the chat, thank you so much. Do us a huge favor, click that thumbs up button, even if you're watching on the replay, click that thumbs up button for us, it means a lot. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, thank you so much. All these shows are available in the audio version on the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. But with that being said, let's get into the reader buzz section for this week. And the first book on the reader buzz section is Year of the Villain. This is that Joker one shot written by John Carpenter, and it's gotten rave reviews. Everyone's loving the story. Yeah, and I mean, is there any doubt? Like, you're talking about John Carpenter, like, he's a master storyteller, especially of the horror genre. And honestly, you're going to see a theme with this list this week. Like, who is bigger than the Joker right now with the movie in theaters, um, with this book, uh, with the Harley book, with the upcoming Joker Black Label solo book, um, with the kind of like Halloween anthology book that they came out with this this week. Um, incredible. 
a lot of stores did exclusive variants for this book. Um, there were a lot of great cover art for people to chase. And then the other big thing is, um, you know, we'll talk about it, you know, talk about reader buzz coming from the variant buzz section for this. And it was added to the graphic late is uh, that Brian Boland variant. Now, it was reported originally it's one per store. Um, there's a lot of reports of stores not getting any. Um, so that has added to the heat of that book. It's gone for about $40. But there was a way your store could actually get several more copies than just one. And that is by actually doing what DC Comics and Diamond Distributorship told you to do with those Superman recalled issues. And you guys out there in Sibelman's Comics family, CBSI Nation, um, you guys may remember that Brian and I, we were big advocates during that time of honor your relationship with the publisher, right? You know, do what do what it is that they're asking you to do because this it's a long term play. And everybody got mad saying, you know, no, you know, LCS has got to try to stay in mo- in business. Well, now you got a forty five dollar book that you could have had a nice stack of had you honored it. I love this idea by DC Comics giving the retailers an incentive for following that policy. I would like to see other publishers follow suit with that but we talked about variants and we talked about store incentives or store exclusives um absolutely a store that went nuts on this book is our guys of course the channel sponsor frankie's comics kevin fields um in my mind the master of store exclusives creates absolutely the the best most unique ones on your screen right now you see that incredible menacing joker francesco matina variant um you got two two versions. You got that trade dress and that minimal trade dress, that DC cover B style, um, just incredible. Still available on the site. Um, I think thirteen dollar buy in to start with the uh, regular version, but just incredible cover art. Um, but he wasn't done there. Um, you know, um, he released two more, really, really four more, because you've got the set of variants that comes. Is that um, G Hung Lee? Sure. <laughs> yes, but not gonna get me to say it because I yeah. always say stuff bad. So you got a three book set there, as you can see. You got the trade dress with Harley and the Joker face in the background. Then you've got the like Virgin cover where you've got just the the Joker face, and then you've got the Virgin cover with Joker face and Harley. Um, really cool, unique three book set there. Bringing in Harley Quinn, of course. Anytime we're talking Joker, we're talking Harley Quinn. But that's not even my favorite book. I can't believe I'm gonna say this. I like the purple blank the best. Yeah, my favorite book is the purple blank variant. And you know what? Bolo Nation responded because I posted that book on Instagram and people went nuts for it. So many comments. You had the Absolute Carnage Red blank, right? Then you had the Ghost Rider Black blank. And by the way, I saw some sick Ghost Rider sketches uh, on that black blank at New York Comic Con. Um, Incredible white sketches. But then this Joker um, purple gets released by Frankie's Comics and all I can think about is how amazing would like some white ink, some red ink, some green ink look on that book. Um, I want to see how people are able to come up with some creative ideas using that purple variant. I think it's a great idea. Um, I'm usually not a fan of paying like more than cover price for a blank cover, but that is one right there that is worth it that I think you could do some unique things and actually get a good ROI you know, once you get the remark done, but even, even if that's not even your thought, just really cool for the PC, just amazing. Great job by uh, Frankie's comics. Come on up with a real unique collectible. Right. And like you said, those are available on the site at Frankie's comics.com. We'll also put links in the description of that huge shout out to the channel sponsor. We like channel sponsors like that because we get behind the product that they provide yeah. between Frankie's comics, slabbed heroes, Two great sponsors, but definitely check out that site if those books are something you might be interested in. The next book on the Reader Buzz, sticking with Joker, is we got Joker Harley Criminal Sanity. Right, and this this one right here um, was a certain consideration for long-term play of the week. Um, For every reason you go back in that I talked about Harleen, um, I think that obviously I've talked about my affinity for DC black label, Brian, you said, you know, DC black labels got your attention at this point. Um, we've got three, three covers there. Um, that, that cover C that black and white cover seems to be selling out everywhere, which surprises me a little bit. Cause I'm a cover a guy with this book. I think cover a, um, that Matina cover is 
incredible. Um, and kind of getting that like juxtaposition between Joker and Harley. But, you know, that Joker Harley relationship is iconic. Um, it's in it just like the Harleen book. I said, could that character could use some tweaking to the origin because it's been all over the place. So could the Joker and Harley relationship. So I'm excited to read this book, maybe more than any other book that came out this week. Right. I'll give one more shout out. If you are near Annapolis, Maryland, this Saturday, Third Eye Comics is going to have the writer, Cami Garcia, and they're also going to have Tom King there doing a signing so you can get this copies of this book signed by the actual writer. Shout out to Third Eye Comics. I always say I have their smaller store here. I live in Southern Maryland, about an hour away from Annapolis. But great store, great guys, great staff. Can't say enough about Third Eye Comics. Annapolis, Lexington Park, Maryland. They also have one in Richmond, Virginia. So if you're in any of those areas, make sure you check them out. But the signing's only happening in Annapolis, Maryland this Saturday. Next book on the Reader Buzz was Batman's Grave Number 1. We got a lot of Batman-esque yep. Gotham books this week. And this was one you and I talked about on the last call show, the pre-FOC show on Friday night, Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, we kind of speculated a bit this could be the series that leads to Batman's death um, and quite possibly gives us that African-American Batman that was rumored on Bleeding Cool. But again, strong, just strong rumors. Um, either way, that makes me very interested to read this story. Plus, Warren Ellis. I mean, Warren Ellis, we talked about John Carpenter being somebody who delivers um, from the cinematic standpoint. Uh, Warren Ellis is a consistent deliverer, uh, deliverer for, you know, various characters. And, um, you know, I'm excited to check out his his kind of dark Batman story. Um, this is a 12-issue series, so, you know, this will encompass a year. But... Definitely, definitely excited for this one. Cover B, I think, is awesome. Um, that would be my one to grab. But, again, for speculation style, you know, those cover A's tend to do a little bit better. But um, that cover B cover art, it's got me. Um, so I'm all about that one. You say Batman may die. I think Batman is one of those gray joys. And what may, what is dead may never die. A little Game of Thrones reference. Seven great seasons. Had a horrible last season. But, yeah, I don't know, man. If they kill off Batman, I don't know. The, the mythos behind Bruce Wayne is just I'm anxious to see. Well, you know, I'm a big believer that the one of the big things in comics that I think is missing is, the, and it's kind of why I like that Spider Man life story, yeah. is progressing characters. I mean, Batman's almost, you know, he's 80 years old. Um, you know, I would. I just want to see at some point. So, so many of us are speculating on like Damian Wayne, or you know, is Dick Grayson going to take the mantle? Who's going to take the mantle? But we never get, actually get that story, other than some Elseworlds future one shot. I would love to see a three or four or five year run where Damian Wayne is Batman, and there is no Bruce Wayne, and then we can come back and bring Bruce back because it's comics, baby. We can always go back. Yeah. Or just spin over to Batman Beyond. But yeah. Either way, it's nice to see. I'm I'm actually excited to see a lot of these DC books in. You'd say it might not be speculation heaven, but all these have been great stories. Especially this next one is always one of my favorites since Rebirth launch. And we're talking Flash number 80. Right, this is the start of a new arc. Um, we just had the Flash year one arc. And it's the reason why I'm excited to talk about this book as well, because can you honestly think of a more consistent read, Brian, since Rebirth started than The Flash? I mean, I think it's probably the go-to book. And it's the reason I said when we were talking about who should take over Batman, I said, man, my pick would be Joshua Williamson. Um, I don't think enough people are reading The Flash. I think it was hot early on when it had those like first appearances, uh, when we had like Godspeed and all that. Um, and then it kind of like leveled off. But the reading quality has not leveled off. Um, Flash is a character that was never a character that I was a huge, huge fan of um, until, like, the TV show started. And I dug the TV show a little bit. And then I really started kind of forcing myself to read more Flash. I'm a Green Lantern guy, full disclosure. Like, I'm a big Green Lantern fan, just like I know you are, Brian. Um, and this Flash series has had me hooked for 
you know, at this point, what, three years now? Um, so, you know, I, I'm an advocate for this series. I'll tell you, I feel, feel very good recommending this series to people. And if you haven't been a Flash reader before, this will get you um, kind of inundated into the Flash universe. Now, the B cover, that's another one of those deceased variants that they're continuing. They're kind of getting back in their theme variant game. Usually, I would say, bad idea, DC. Your last time you did this, it didn't really work. But I will say some of these deceased variants have been very cool. Plus, it's kind of a, I mean, it's a throwback. Next one we're getting into is keeping with the DC trend. Keeping with October and their one-shots they like to put out, we are going with Secrets of Sinister House, Giant Size Number 1. Yeah, you know, and this was one, as soon as it kind of got solicited, I was interested in. Um, the cover art alone kind of gets me gets me excited to read this one. I, you know, I, I was never a big horror reader, but as horror stuff kind of took off, it, it, it kind of like got me on the bandwagon. I'm really enjoying it. Um and I will say, we talked about this. I think DC Comics is kind of putting out the consistent reads right now. Dying on the speculation side, but killing on the reader side. Um, and there's just several books this week. If I look at um, the first books I would gravitate to read, it would be all of these Gotham-related books, um, as well as Flash. So I think this is a timely release. Um, again, Joker, right, right off the bat on the cover, you know, right when the movie's out, right when Joker's red hot. Um, and the DC dark kind of stuff has done extremely well. And it's a, and again, this is what they've done consistently around Halloween is release these types of kind of anthology stories. Right. And as we're going through these books, if you guys have read it or there's books that we're not talking about that you did read and liked, make sure you put those in the comments as well. Cause we love to hear what other people are reading. This isn't just our list. We always say this is the community's list. Jack might create the list. But all these titles come from actual reader buzz. He canvasses social media, tries to find out what people are talking about. And that's where the list gets created from. Again, this is not a list of, hey, buy all these titles to make some yeah. money. We're comic hobby enthusiasts first. These are stuff that are great reads, great stories. People are buzzing about variant buzz, as the title says. But either way, let us know in the comments what books you guys are enjoying this week. And we're going to keep going on because we're not done with Reader Buzz yet. Nope. Next book is Powers of X number six. But we are done with House and Powers of X. This concludes this 12-issue series. And again, we've talked about it. I think every single issue, Brian, has been on the Reader Buzz section. Um, and again, that's not a plug and play. Um, that is absolutely earned, deserved, um, demanded by the public. And, um, you know, variants have done exceptionally well. Uh, we talked about it every week. You know, grab the one in 10, grab the flower variant, grab the connecting variant. Um, that's been kind of the mantra. But at this point, it'll be interesting to see long term how these series stand up. And again, all praise to Hickman. But where I have, am still skeptical is how will they keep this X heat as they split into all of these various teams, some of which are a little bit more out there, like Excalibur or Marauders. Right, and then thing is, is you can't even catch your breath because, well, we got X-Men number one coming next week, right? Right. Now, that's the one I have higher hopes for, X-Men and X-Force. I think those two series is, have a better chance of, of standing solid. Plus, I think Hickman's writing X-Men, so I think that you'll get more of that crossover. Right. And keeping up with Marvel when it comes to the amount of covers they put out for books, we got Spawn 301. I don't even have all the covers on here. I think the letters went up to what? Q or R? Yeah, right. In crazy. Incredible. And this is um, this was buzzed about heavy. Um, Phil Lee of uh, Vintage Comics and Toys. Shout out to him. ComicBookInvest.com. Con Recon writer. Um, he was telling me that she Venom. Or step she spawned. I stop that. I keep doing that. Every time I say she spawned, I say she venom. But she shed. She's yeah. She she shed. Um, she spawned. He said was the talk of New York Comic Con. That so many people were talking about this character. Um, so and again for the old school spawn fans. Yes, there was a she spawn before. This is a different one, um, and this is the one that's relevant at this point. Um, and this is the first full appearance. Although 
those of you out there, Timbleman's Comics family, know how I feel about it, how Brian feels about it. That was a first appearance in 300. But the market's going to do what the market's going to do. The, the important thing about this issue is this is a record-breaking issue. Um, a lot of people attributed that record-breaking 300 issue. That was really the record-tying issue. Now they've broken the record, longest-running independent series, um, which is just incredible. Uh, and I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. As far as the variants, there's the variants have been heavily talked about. The two that seem to be getting the most attention are Clayton Crane and J. Scott Campbell. And I got to say, J. Scott Campbell is a guy who I'm not a big fan of, who I know a lot of people are. Um, he killed this one. I think this is an exceptional variant. So um, I would be on the lookout for those. The J. Scott Campbell, there's two. There's the trade dress and a virgin copy. I would say look for that virgin copy if you're looking for one. But it's just hard because, you know, the print run on this is going to be a couple hundred thousand. Right. Some of them did have virgins. I just put one copy of the cover on there because, as you can see, I already took up the screen with the covers that I did have. And, yeah, it's just a pain consolidating them all, to be honest. But, um, of course, my favorite cover, probably, I like that Virgin Matina cover, but I'm also a big Alex Ross fan. And we were excited. We were talking, I think, 300. We were surprised. One, we were surprised there wasn't a Matina for 300, as well as Alex Ross. We got both of those right. for issue 301. Then, the next one we have on the reader buzz is... Absolute Carnage Miles Morales number three. This one had some good buzz when it first got like the cover art shown, and then it seemed to have kind of died out a bit. Um, this doppelganger story, which was red hot on the character first appearing, has kind of died a bit. Um, those Codex 125 variants are still seemingly available at a lot of retail outlets. Um, they're selling for a little bit below ratio. That cover beat by David Nakayama. I think is a good good looking book um if you're in on doppelganger that's a good that's a incentive quality cover b but um miles morales is kind of like it seems like silly to say this but he's like quietly hot right now there's a lot of smart speculators in the spec community putting money into miles morales right now and not just the first appearance but the spider-man two number one the evil miles stuff the doppelganger stuff um a lot of speculators i really respect are going hard with miles morales right now yeah, the story, with speculation aside, just the story itself is, to me, it's way much... Wait, right, we talked about that, yeah. better than ASM, yeah. consistently. So, definitely, I mean, if not, if speculating, fine, but if you just want to read a good Spider-Man story, just the Miles Morales Spider-Man series that's going on outside of this Absolute Carnage story, definitely check that series out as well. And then the last book on the Reader Buzz section this week was... Doctor Doom number one. Yeah, and we talked about this one on the FOC show. We said, you know, not a lot of speculation involved with this book, but a, definitely an interesting read. Fantastic Four um, is a book I actually just started picking up to read, and I'm really enjoying it. I think it's a sleeper series. This is the first Doctor Doom, like, real solo series. Um, there, there were some, like, little mini series, but this is the first ongoing Doctor Doom Um uh, villain series have been popular they've done well um and i don't mean again from a speculation standpoint but from like a reader buzz standpoint think about loki or thanos both of those series is were really well received i kind of expect that from dr doom um and it's a character that i think is going to be a major player in the mcu coming up very very soon so if you're not a big fantastic four fan um if you're a newer into comics in like this is the thing I think people take for granted when we talk Fantastic Four. If you got into comics in the last five years, you haven't read anything Fantastic Four most likely because, you know, Marvel really wasn't doing much with the Fantastic Four. So I think this is a great way to get yourself familiar with Doctor Doom and, um, you know, kind of prepare yourself for that MCU appearance. Right, and the one on the far right is what? I think it's a 1 in 100 hidden gem variant. Yes, Hidden Gem Variant. Hidden Gem Variants have done pretty well for themselves. The one just to the left of that one is my favorite, I think, variant cover of all of the covers. Um, kind of that portrait pose with that fiery background. All right. And that's going to wrap up the Reader Buzz section for this week. And now we're going to get into the Variant Buzz. So the first book... On the Variant Buzz section, this is one of my favorites. We talked about this during the last call show. But this was G.I. Joe 267. This is the 1 in 10 variant. 
right? Just John Royal. I'll tell you what, this guy is an underrated artist. He's been doing his thing on the G.I. Joe books for quite some time. I follow him on Instagram. He is exceptionally talented. I think he's one of those guys that he just needs to get plucked by one of like the big two to start doing covers, and you'll start to see him pop. He's got kind of a J. Scott Campbell, like mid-'90s vibe to him. But, yeah, this is definitely a great cover. I'm excited, of course. It, it may not be public reader buzz, but it's definitely Miss Bolo reader buzz. This is my book I'm most excited to read. Um, this one uh, looks like it's going to get into the kidnapping of Sean Collins by um, – by Cobra and Cobra Commander. Um, I have not read it yet. I, I am excitedly waiting my copy. Um, and uh, you guys know we've been talking Snake Hunt for a while. I think this is going to be a big series. Um, the, the, heat, the heat hasn't quite been there yet, but I think that's because the events that will cause the heat we haven't gotten to yet. And this happens pretty frequently with these G.I. Joe stories. So we could be midway through this this series and something happens that pops in the market and suddenly everybody's running back trying to get those older issues um but don't say that brian wood and jack bell didn't tell you so about this one we we told you way in advance that this was going to be a big storyline yeah especially him this is that awesome 80s cartoon what you're used to growing up to type story it's been a fun read yes i'd um taken a hiatus from gi joe got back into it probably about Six issues right before this arc, mostly because Jack kept talking about it and wouldn't shut up. But <laughs> Never gonna either. I'm glad he did because it kind of reminds me of my childhood again and how much G.I. Joe. I even tried to get my kids to watch the old G.I. Joe cartoon and they weren't having nothing of it because they wanted to play Roblox or watch some sorry YouTube kids channels. But G.I. Joe, they'll get there and then these books will belong to them. But... Keeping with that whole 80s theme, you know I always give 80s movie references, and I can't think of a bigger 80s movie to talk about than Karate Kid, but this is the Cobra Kai, the YouTube exclusive show they have on there. I watched the first season, actually enjoyed it, but here we have Cobra Kai, Karate Kid Saga Continues number one. This was the variance for it, right? Right, and when this series got announced, or when this when the YouTube series got announced, I kind of thought to myself, a YouTube show, eh. You know what? It was incredible. And not only was it incredible, I think it really paved the way for a lot of these other shows that have popped up to kind of continue the storylines of the original shows. So we've seen like Fuller House from Full House, and now uh, we have the new uh, 90210. We've got the new um, um, Saved by the Bell coming soon. Um, I, I really think that that 80s, 90s nostalgia and the rebooting these shows has been popular. Now, as far as the comic, television and movie properties don't tend to do exceptionally well in comics. Having said that, there's a cult following here, and I think that these variants have a chance. It's funny. You look at that one in ten incentive with the Cobra logo. My man, uh, Mel V, uh, from the Mighty Mel V YouTube channel... He, as soon as this series got announced, he was like, all I want is a variant with the Cobra Kai logo. And I just thought, like, why would they make one with just the Cobra Kai logo? Sure enough, he got what he wanted. So I hope he picked that one up today at Midtown. Um, and again, we've talked about these IDW variants where there's a 1 in 25 incentive. And how, how you got to think, like, how many stores are ordering 25 Cobra Kai um, books? Not, probably not a ton. So I think long term, that 125 may have some legs with those kind of 80s nostalgia buffs like Brian. Yes, but I will say, if there was just one cover, it'd be harder for stores to order 25 copies. But this was also spread across four covers, or three if you don't include the one in 25, right? So, I still don't think too many stores ordered that many copies, unless, yeah, they live in a land. They're near a place where it's got a bunch of people like me that just love 80 movies, but... yeah. Either way, <laughs> and that one depicts a classic scene. So, if, if the younger people are watching this and they haven't watched the original Karate Kid... Definitely watch it just for that scene alone, of course. Yeah. It'll age us, though. Yeah, oh, yeah. Because <laughs> Ralph Macchio, not a very cool guy. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I, and to some of the more modern people, they may know him as the crooked cop from The Deuce on HBO. <laughs> yeah. But either way, 
Happy Sea Karate Kid, Cobra Kai. And if you haven't, definitely check out the show on YouTube. But uh, right on into the next one. On the Variant Buzz this week, we have Web of Black Widow. And this is the Stephanie Hans variant, right? Right. Hans, not hand. It wouldn't be a bullet list if I didn't make at least one typo. But uh, this on one the got... Variant a... Buzz section. <laughs> right, right. This one, uh, this one got a uh, a lot of buzz. Um, people were grabbing this. It's going over ratio already. Um, Hans has just a solid fan base, but it's funny. It's hard to predict which of her books are gonna do well and which ones won't, because some pop and some don't. So you, you can't just. It's not like a, a to use the term again a plug and play situation where you can just say, well, it's a one twenty five Hans variant. It'll do well. Doesn't tend to work like that. Um, this one I think is unique in the in the aspect of it. The fact that like she's facing downward, it's like a different kind of look to the book. But um, doesn't look like some of her other stuff. But at the same point, like people jumped all over this. I don't think Black Widow number two is going to be hugely ordered the same way. And there so wasn't many, a, a whole bunch of covers. No. So how many stores are ordering twenty five copies of Black Widow two? Um, probably not many. So I think this is there's a scarcity issue with this book. Yeah, I think some of the part, times where her covers don't do well, they get lost in the wash of all the other covers that are out there. So there's more out there for it. Um, huge fan of Stephanie Hans. And if you want to just admire the art and a good story, we've talked about it a lot, definitely Die from Image Comics. That's one series that's worth picking up, especially for a Stephanie Hans fan covers and interior art. Then the last book on the Variant Buzz section. That is Future Fight First White Fox number one. This is the Virgin variant for it, right? Right, the one in 100 Virgin variant. Um, now, there were some firsts apparently in this one coming out of the um, like Marvel anime. Um, to talk about that, there were some comments about that. I read the articles that kind of hyped those appearances. But we had an issue several, several um, a couple months ago with – similar articles from similar websites um and what is initially talked about upon solicitation doesn't always come the way the market bears it so it's the type of thing we like visual confirmation we like a two-part confirmation we did not get that second part confirmation so i've said this before and i'm standing by this i would rather not list a first appearance on the first appearance list than to list one wrong. When we've listed them wrong, I feel terrible. Um, I don't want to steer anybody in the wrong direction. That you know, That's kind of the explanation on that. The more important thing is how amazing that cover art is, which is why I think that that book is spiking. Um, and it's also not an easy get because this is another book where who's ordering a hundred copies of this book? Um, Brian uh, informed me before the show of Mel V from the Mighty Mel V YouTube channel. He also let us know, a lot of you know, uh, he's written this column for comicsheatingup.net um, about his Wednesday warrioring at Midtown Comics downtown. He let us know that there was only three copies of this at Midtown Comics. Now, that's 300 copies. It's a lot of copies. But Midtown Comics is one of the largest purchasers of new comics but in the country. that's across multiple locations in, in New York, too. Right, right. So how many of your local LCSs in Indiana, in Idaho, in Wisconsin, in South Carolina – are ordering a hundred copies of this book, um, probably a minuscule amount. So there is a good chance that this book, regardless of the first appearances, which by the way, anime versions of Avengers, I put very little stock in as far as first appearances. Um, but that this on not just a cover art basis alone and a scarcity alone, I can see this one being a multiple hundred dollar book um, without a doubt because it's just the difficulty in acquiring it. Yeah, especially in high grade with that black cover. Mm-hmm. I mean, you hear that a lot. It's almost cliche now, but I mean, it rings true with spine ticks are going to show all over it. So get that and get it a nine, eight. And me personally, though, I'll pass because I'm just not interested in the title. But yeah, let us know if you, if you guys watching this video, if, if you read this book, what you think of it. What do you think about this one in 100 variant? Is this something that you're going to be on the hunt for? Something that you were able to get a hold of? Let us know how many of them did you see when you were out there at your LCS this week. Anxious to find out. But yeah, definitely see this book spiking um, for all the reasons that we just mentioned. And with that, we are wrapping up the variant buzz section. 
So real quick, before we get into the long-term play, I just want to take this time again. Also, thank everyone that's in the chat right now during this live premiere. And if you're watching this on replay, really, really appreciate it. Comment, let us know. Hey, these are the books I read this week. These are the books I like to read because that's how the bolo list gets made as well. Especially that whole reader buzz section. It's about the community. What people are buzzing about. We're not talking just spec books. What do you enjoy reading? What's hot to you guys right now? Because those, a lot of times I read the comments and there's books in there that I'm not aware of or people suggest it. I pick it up. Next thing you know, I have a new series that I'm enjoying. But... We're not going to hold people back from all this excitement anymore. We're going to get into Jack's long-term play of the week. And everyone knows we've had Arun Singh from Boom Studios on this channel for multiple interviews. We'd like to talk about Power Rangers. We've talked once in future. We talked... Something is killing the children. Another thing we talk about is the wrestling. Jack and I are wrestling fans, so we're always talking to Haroon, who is a wrestling fan as well, about all the great WWE books coming out of Boom. But during those interviews, we also talked about Hellmouth number one with Buffy and Angel. So what's so important about this book, Jack? Well, you know, if you're familiar at all with Buffy and Angel as far as the television series is from back in the day, um, or the comics, which brought full disclosure, Brian and I have admitted that we weren't really on that at those points in our lives. Having said that, getting to read some of the new series is we both enjoyed kind of the dark horror aspect of these two series. Um, and they frequently, they exist in the same universe and they frequently crossed over on both television and comics. But Boom Studios took over this property from Dark Horse, um, I think within the last year. And since they have, this is the first crossover event that they have done. Um, and Boom has put their entire marketing efforts into this book. <clears throat> We've even seen secondary market coverage from places like Bleeding Cool talking about this book and the, the hype behind the book. Now, people will – there's going to be a lot of people that immediately say, well, it's Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I'm not interested. Okay. I can accept that. It's fine. Um, but the point of the long-term play is we're trying to identify books that maybe the public isn't talking about, that there may be some speculation potential there. And when you look at a long-term play, there's some great books that came out this week. But there's a million Joker and Harley type things. There's a million Joker one-shots type stuff. Um, the best books that got released this week probably don't have a lot of like long-term speculation potential. And it kind of leaves me with this being the most solid option because the reality of the situation is, we've talked about this before, with the resurgence of these comic series, I have to believe Joss Whedon wants to bring Buffy and Angel back to whether it's the small screen or the big screen. Imagine especially, a movie. Especially after you just mentioned all those resurrections of those shows from the 80s and 90s. Right. And I don't watch a lot of these shows. But I'll admit it, guilty pleasure, I liked Veronica Mars. They just brought that back to Hulu. So who knows what will happen with this franchise, especially with the buzz that it's been getting. Right, and this is where I, where I speculate is if they do it and they kind of take a more adult, horror, dark approach to the series than it was originally had, and they use kind of this boom series to mine for content. Um, I imagine if like a, a movie was called Hellmouth. If it was, you know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer Hellmouth, you're not going to tell me that that type of announcement wouldn't spark interest in this book. Also, like this is a book where characters have appeared, first appeared in some other books from the series. Um, there's also uh, a cro the current crossover going between the two books. So there's a lot going on with these books. Now, you've got that. Now you've got a Jenny Frizen variant, a 125 variant. Um, lot, we talk about Jenny Frizen a lot. There's a lot of Frizen um, diehards who are buying everything Jenny Frizen. If you're going to sit there and go, well, nobody likes Buffy the Vampire Slayer, well, that only plays into it because this book is going to be lesser printed than you say your Marvel or DC crossover books for sure. Um, it's already and, gone to second print. Right. It's already gone to second print. Not, not only is it going to second print, the second print sold out and it's been – pushed a third print, and the CEO had to put out the information that they've had to fast-track the late printings, a la Once in Future and Something's Killing the Children, and there will most likely be allocations with those later printings. So that's something to be on the lookout for. 
Um, and then for you old school Buffy fans, that like cover B variant, um, and then there's a black and white comic book Defense League Fund variant version of it, um, has kind of that Sarah Michelle Gellar, David Boreanaz depiction of um, Buffy and Angel, which I think is cool for the OG fans. Doesn't appeal to me as much because, like I said, I'm more of like a – I'm taking this as like a whole new thing. That's how I'm walking into – um, reading these this Buffy and Angel story. And it's funny because I think if there wasn't a Buffy the Vampire Slayer show from back in the day, Brian, if this was a totally new property, I think this this these series have been so good and the art has been so good, I think it'd be red hot on the market. If this was an independent series that was just brand new, um, I think it would be, you know, one of the other boom major releases. The fact that it's a television property hurts it because people have preconceived notions. So I don't think they're giving it the chance um, but Bleeding Cool ran an article about the upcoming foil variant, kind of a weird situation. There was like a FOC foil variant, um, a Lambert variant, and it won't come out till I think like the 30th of the month. It's, it's like heavily delayed, but it's selling incredibly well pre-sales on eBay, like ridiculously high sales. Here's a big bolo for you guys. Boom Studios web stores selling pre-orders of that book for $10. Do not pay those eBay prices. So if you read that article and you you know you got that FOMO kicking in, um, don't do that. Head to Boom Studios website, put in that ten dollar pre order. Uh, you know you're much much better off than what those current market prices are going for. Um, and it's important to also note that some of the past Buffy Frizen variants have done extremely well on the secondary market. So yes, it's selling for ratio, but a lot of Buffy variants have sold well below ratio upon release. So the fact that it's selling for ratio, I think, is very strong. Um, and the feel you get is almost similar to, I don't want to get killed for saying this, but the something's killing the children variant where in that you get kind of that like grayscale with the color coming off of it, the portrait look. Um, and again, I stand by my statement. If, if people didn't have a preconceived notion about the Sarah Michelle Geller TV show, um, and this was just an independent property being released now, I think this would be the hottest thing on the market. And because of that, you know, it's not printed as heavily as people probably think it is. Um, and it's it, because it is a television property that worked before, because it is a movie property that worked before, I believe that Hollywood is bound to do something with this again. And when they do, I think this Boom series is going to have a lot of high ratio variants. We talked about like that one in 40 J. Lee variant from like a couple weeks ago um, that are really going to pop. And this Hellmouth series, I always say, follow the money, right? Well, while we were trying to get a Rune Singh, pump him for information on Once in Future, he was talking Hellmouth. While we were trying to get Power Rangers info, he was talking Hellmouth. Um, this has been one that he has heavily, heavily, heavily hyped. Um, and yes, that is his job as a VP of marketing. But the guy has a proven track record for not steering the community in the wrong direction. Um, so... If you're skeptical but you want to read a series, I think this is the jumping on point. This is where you may want to check out and read. Um, there's some crossovers um, with, with the other books, but this is a good mini series to jump in and kind of see whether this is for you. Also, from a speculation perspective, I would look out for that foil. I would look out for that Jenny Frizen 125 for sure. I think those are, are solid books. And I'll also say kind of a shot in the dark thing. Not a lot of stores I see are going to be ordering that blank variant. Every now and again, you see blank variants do exceptionally well. That's one of those ones that could because they tend to be those off-the-wall books. And then, again, the books are already gone to second and third print. So it's obviously got serious reader buzz. It's getting media attention. Um, so I think when you look at the slate of releases this week, it's the one that has the most, to me, the most long-term potential. Which is why it's Jack's long-term play. I'm, for one, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about, we had a rune on here, what, back in July. And you mentioned how we were asking about other titles, and he was talking about Hellmouth, talking about Angel, talking about Buffy, talked about Once in Future during that same interview. All those books that we were excited about while we were having that conversation with him, they're now here. We're able to get our hands on it, read the stories, and... Form your own opinion. My personal opinion, I've enjoyed all these. I'm not just saying that because we have that relationship with the Rune Singh. Boom's putting out great books. Vault's putting out great books. Mad Cave's putting out great books. Those are the books that I like. 
we always say, buy what you like. Those are the books that we're buying right now. Great stories, great time to be a comic book reader. I don't care about speculation. I'm talking if you just like reading comics, there's no better time right now, no matter what you like. Superheroes, horror. I mean, holy crap. So many books are out. Wouldn't you agree, Jack? Yeah, I mean, it's a great time to be a, a comic fan, a comic reader, a comic collector. Um, you know, people keep talking about the bubble b- popping, but I see more and more new people coming in every day. And, you know, the the quality continues to go up on a lot of these books. There's just so much going on. And the organic, say, speculation based upon reading buzz is the coolest thing I've seen, I think, in 2019. Right. Perfect example. I said earlier in this show, my wife's freaking reading comics. She always looked at me like freaking nerd. But comics, if you like stories, why not read comics? It's just better for slower readers like me that don't like to read big-ass novels without pictures. <laughs> but either way, that's our show for you tonight, guys. Make sure you like, click that thumbs up button. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe so you can see all the future videos that were released on this channel. And with that being said, we wish you guys good night. Hey, ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast stick, you can get high with me, that's a deal, right? Ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast stick, you can get high with me, that's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right?